Howdy folks, George Shively with you here on our next project. This is a 1996 uh, Beneteau Oceanus 400. And uh, as you can tell there in the picture, we've got some older auto helm equipment that uh, is going to get replaced. On the, uh, the far left side there is the autopilot. That will stay. Uh, the triodata, the wind, and the GPS there on the far right. That is going to get replaced. We're going to put in a, uh, a Garmin. Um, chart plotter at the helm and uh, give the uh, owner of the boat the ability to do, do uh, some navigation here from the uh, from the helm so make it a little bit easier there was a uh, uh, VHF radio uh, very creatively I might add mounted in the top of the, uh, the box there there's the old VHF and it was mounted in the top uh, as I said very creatively uh, just fit and somebody did a nice job on that but uh, we're going to replace that, go with one VHF radio, and um, just have the principal radio downstairs at the uh, nav table, and then a remote mic up here on the uh, the new helm pod that we're putting in. Uh, going to remove the GPS antenna that's on the back here, along with the uh, secondary VHF antenna that's on the back, and uh, of course we're going to replace the anemometer that's at the top of the mast, and... Uh, uh, spiff this up a little bit and give them a little bit of modern convenience. So just want to show you what things look like here before we get going and uh, we'll be back. Thank Howdy you. folks, we're back on the Benetou here. I wanted to show you something real quick. Uh, we've got the uh, the helm pod taken off here. Uh, some of the wires sorted out, uh, labeling things as we go so that uh, you know we know uh, what we're dealing with. Um, that says anemometer, wind anemometer. Probably can't read it, but um, Garmin power. Uh, but we run into things like this. This is this is a good example of the kind of thing we run into, where it's basically you've had wires that have been teed off other wires, and um, they are not even using again, as I said, the the heat shrinkable type of connectors. So if you I don't know if you can see it there, but if you look right into the end of that connector, you can basically see the wire. Whereas if you're using, you know, the heat shrinkable type connectors, you crimp them, then you shrink the end, and there's, you know, no way that moisture can ever get into that situation. Um, here's another uh, something I, I just don't like to see. Uh, this is a connection that goes to the autopilot. Uh, there's actually two of them. Um, that was the other one uh, that we clipped out of the arrangement. And here's the other one right here that's just wrapped in electrical tape. Again, electrical tape's great for pulling wires through a boat, but you know, when you when you've got to you know properly cover a uh, a wire, there's something called heat shrink tubing, um, which is you know kind of what I'm holding in my hand here. Uh, it's neater, it works better, it keeps moisture out, and it'll never fail. Um, maybe it takes a little bit more effort, but uh, on the long haul, it it's never going to fail you. So, anyway, just kind of want to show you what we've been doing here. Uh, we've got the uh, the helm pod off. I've uh, been doing a lot with wiring inside the boat, um, pulling out old wiring. Um, so, I uh, just want to stop in and show you what we're doing, and we'll stop back soon. Thanks a lot for watching the video. Hi, folks. George Shively back with you here on the um, 40 1996 uh, Benetou Ocean. I just want to show you how the uh, the helm is shaping up here. We've got our new helm pod mounted, um, which is looking real nice. Uh, of course, the uh, autopilot's going to go in the, uh, the left side, port side, 741 in the center, Garmin, and wind will be on the uh, starboard side, but the wind will also be tied into the Garmin uh, via NEMA 2000. So you'll actually be able to have a, uh, a wind display uh, on the Garmin as well, which is kind of nice. We're working on um, tying the NEMA data into the autopilot and that is located uh, right down there. You probably can't see it, not in a flight, sorry about that, but um, it's inside the, uh, the laser right here. Let's see if we can't get some light going here. There we go. Uh, working on the uh, autopilot brain, which is right there, and I uh, need to get some wiring to that for uh, NEMA 183. So we're going to work on that, and where else are we? Oh, I wanted to take a moment here and show you something that I found uh, when I replaced the transducer. If you look closely at this transducer, 
you can kind of see a blue cast to it. That blue cast is bottom paint. Uh, and it appears that somebody tried to sand it off at some point. Uh, you cannot paint a transducer with anything but special paint designed specifically for a transducer. Because what happens is, is the solvents in the, uh, the uh, bottom paint will actually go in and destroy the uh, ceramic element inside of the body of the transducer, thus rendering the transducer useless. So this was painted at some point. Um, I believe the depth sounder was still working. I don't know that 100%, but this has definitely been painted. And uh, that transducer should be uh, black as the uh, Volvo Penta Control is there. And it is not. It's kind of um, blue, So, uh, which is, the, interestingly enough, the color of the bottom paint on the boat. So that's something we, we never want to see because that uh, that will not do very well. Also the other thing too is um, well, that's it actually that's it. So uh, we're getting uh, getting our self together here with the, the new helm pod that's gonna look real nice fixing some other things as we go along and uh, uh, that's where we're at at the moment so stay tuned we'll be back. Howdy folks back with you real quick here on the uh, 400 Oceanus. I uh, just want to show you what we're doing here at the nav station here down in the, uh, the port side. We've removed the uh, existing uh, ICOM VHF radio. It was not a, a DSC radio. Obviously it went right in that hole there. We've disposed of that because again uh, having a DSC radio these days is very important from a safety standpoint. So we've removed that and we're going to make that hole a little bit bigger and install a ICOM 506. A little dark but ICOM 506 full DSC radio and that will also give us the capability to work with our uh, remote mic that you, huh, ah, there we go, remote mic that you see hanging there on the side of the, uh, the steering helm. So just want to give you a quick look here and show you what we're doing in the, uh, uh, in the meantime before we finish up. Thanks very much for watching. Howdy folks, Stay George Shively here back with you. I just want to give you a quick peek inside the, uh, the nav pod here before we get this uh, sealed up. If you'll notice, without the cover on the nav pod, um, all the wires can neatly lay in there um, and it's, it's not a total mess. Furthermore, there's plenty of room here and if you look at this from a, a side perspective, you can see there's plenty of room, probably nearly 8-10 inches, of wiring that can come out from the base of the nav pod so that you can make the connections on your panel. We've got our, um, our, our new panel here made um, where the existing autopilot will stay there on the port side. Uh, the new Garmin 741 XS is in the uh, center and the new Raymarine Wind is on the uh, starboard side. This is how the owner wanted things laid out. So um, that's how that looks. But it's very important just from a uh, a serviceable standpoint that you know you've got you know enough length on your wires and that everything just lays in there nicely um, so that you know it's it's serviceable um, and it's it's not a total disaster where many times you know you, you take off a nav pod and it's just oh my god it's a mess and when you have to make connections on wires as you can see the blue shrink wrap uh, uh, tubing that I've used um, to you know, properly make connections. Uh, that, that, that's going to unfortunately be the nature of the beast. Um, but you, you make your connections, you do them neatly, and you, you know you're good to go. So, just want to show you how that looks uh, for right now. We'll be back uh, with a wrap up hey here. Hey, folks, Drake back with you here. Just real quick here before I put the uh, the two halves of the nav pod together. This is what you should be able to do with any electrical. Um, inspection point or connection point is be able to clearly open up the face, lay it down, make your connections, and then be able to put things back together. Uh, how many times have you opened up an electrical panel or someplace you need to get into and you can only you know pull the panel back this far because the wiring is too tight to be able to adequately service it? So just kind of wanted to show you how you know I do this so that in the future you know you can get to things. So thank you. Howdy folks, back with you here. Just want to give you a quick uh, view here of how things look with the, uh, the nav pod reassembled. Um, a little hard to see the, uh, the lettering there on the, uh, the old ST6000, but you can see that's in standby. Uh, that's in good shape. The new uh, 741XS Garmin, um, that's going to be our um, 
depth indicator as well. And uh, the new I-60 Raymarine um, wind machine there on the starboard side, which is not going to give it anything except dashes at this point because our anemometer is not connected to the uh, the display. The mast is uh, has been stepped. Um, and then coming down here on the uh, port side of the helm, you've got the um, Command Mic 3, the ICOM Command Mic 3, which is tied into the new VHF radio that we've put downstairs. So I just kind of want to give you a, a final look on that. Uh, everything's worked out very well. It's nice and neat and clean, um, modern, and uh, uh, of course the ST6000 could use some updating, but it's still working, so we're going to leave it be. So just wanted to give you a show there of what, uh, what things look like and how they turned out. Uh, as always, if you'd like to get in touch with us, George Shively at South Shore Marine Electronics. Our telephone number is 216-407-6553. And our email address is southshoremarineelectronics at oh.rr.com. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.